The views expressed on this episode of My Take Radio do not reflect the views, thoughts, or feelings of the My Take Radio staff, My Take Radio advertisers, or My Take Radio content partners. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. This coverage is live and uncensored, so if you have any small children present, you may want to have them leave the room. What's going on, guys? My Take Radio, episode 287 for Thursday, April 16th, 2015. I'm your host, Rich, and our caller number is 347-324-3541. Again, that caller number, 347-324-3541. If this is your first time tuning into My Take Radio, My Take Radio is a variety show covering mixed martial arts, professional wrestling, gaming, and entertainment. Our MMA and wrestling editions air every Wednesday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. And our gaming and entertainment editions can be watched, listened to on Thursday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. Archived episodes of the show are available on iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. If you want to participate in the show, you can use our call-in number, the chat room on mtrlive.com or gfqlive.tv, and of course... You can also call in hit and not hit option one, and you can listen to the show that way as well. If you're using a mobile device, you can use the Mixler app. Just type in My Take Radio, and you can stream the show live via the Mixler app to your mobile device right now. All right, so, man, it's been a uh, crazy couple of days, crazy week, I should say. Um, let me give you guys a little background before we jump into tonight's topic. So... Last week after we finished uh, Thursday night show on Friday, I decided it would be a good idea to get a new desk. So in the interest of covering things appropriately, I wanted to get a, uh, an L-shaped desk. And um, pretty much the way it worked out was we picked up the desk and we it, it took roughly most of Friday night to put the desk together. At which point on Saturday, uh, the desk was put together, but unfortunately, I still had to throw stuff out, had to rewire the the setup, the studio setup, including our PC, our mixers, our mics, you name it. That's what we had to do. Unfortunately, because of that, that caused a lot of unnecessary issues as well. Uh, a couple of our switches shorted out for our Ethernet stuff, so... We had to order new Cat6 cables, a new Ethernet switch. It was, without a doubt, a fucking nightmare. Because of this, uh, content on Rageworks took a big hit. There was hardly any new posts put up. And in addition to that, we could not upload episode 286 and the last episode of Black is the New Black. Luckily, I pretty much have almost everything resolved and up and running, and we did publish those two episodes on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and on RageWorks.net as well. So, next week, knock on wood, <laughs> knock on the new desk, we should be back to our regular broadcasting schedule with wrestling and MMA on Wednesdays and gaming and entertainment on Thursdays. So, with that said, our work with Patreon and all the other stuff took a big hit last week due to all these equipment issues but we're going to be working on that this week we got some great product reviews heading your way uh we got a uh, two tilt devices that we got in two tilt wireless charging devices which i will be reviewing with my note 4 and um those reviews are going to be 
on RageWorks.net within the next couple of days. We are doing those reviews in conjunction with our friends from Royal Flush Magazine. Uh, Danny will probably be joining us later on during the gaming segment as she got to check out the brand new Guitar Hero Live while she participated in the Activision event. She will be calling in and sharing her thoughts on that. We are going to get into the week's gaming news, of course, the MPD numbers, all the usual stuff, plus the week's entertainment news. I know a lot of people are going crazy about the brand new Star Wars trailer. I, I do have to put that on RageWorks.net. And also the leak of the Batman Superman trailer, which got out earlier this evening. Um, a Brazilian Twitter user actually shared some footage from the alleged trailer. And from what I saw, it looked pretty badass. Uh, we'll get into that. And of course, all the entertainment news as well. The, other, the only other housekeeping items I did want to get out of the way is our broadcast schedule through the month of May. And through June. In June, we will be covering Special Edition NYC on June 6th and 7th, I believe, or June 7th and 8th. Uh, in any case, we will probably have shows that Thursday and that Friday. And then we will do a recap show the following week for Special Edition NY. In addition, we will be covering Consumer Electronics Week. That will be the week of June 21st, I believe. And that week, there will probably be no shows only because... We will be working uh, Consumer Electronics Week and getting all that stuff out there. So with that said, that is pretty much the only foreseeable delays in broadcasting in, in MTR broadcast for the near future. But as always, things do come up unexpectedly. But as of right now, we are pretty much set for the duration of this month through May and of course through June. The whole forum fiasco, like I said, we had to kind of put a stop to that after the site took a big, big hit in terms of performance a couple of weeks back. So that's kind of on the back burner. A couple of people were asking about uh, Rageworks and My Take Radio shirts. The MTR shirts are still available if you're interested in ordering them. Uh, Rageworks shirts, eh, still kind of on the fence about doing those for a multitude of reasons. Uh, number one. Because we put together My Take Radio shirts, everybody wanted them, everybody was asking for them, and not that many people jumped out and bought them, even though we got input from our listeners, and again, this could become a bitch session real quick, and I'm not going to do that, but we're, we're not giving any thought to any sort of merchandising at the moment, but it's something we have considered. Again, our focus right now is Patreon and getting content out and event coverage, so once we kind of get some of those things up and running, then maybe we will revisit the um, the whole merchandising aspect. I know some of you guys had asked about the uh, the chat for the show. I actually have been looking at alternative chats, but with our relationship with GFQ, we are using that chat to go along with their player. So unless we devise something differently, uh, for the time being, we're going to work with that until we can figure out some other stuff. But uh, the chat has been running good. I see everybody in there. A lot of our usual suspects, a couple of new faces. Uh, shout out to everybody that's in there. As always, thank you all for tuning in. Anyway, as I said, we got a ton of gaming news on deck. We're going to talk about the MPD numbers. We're going to talk about a couple of other things that went down this week. I do want to give some initial thoughts on Mortal Kombat X or Mortal Kombat 10. And of course, the entertainment news for the week. So with that said... Let's not waste any more time and get this ball rolling. Let's get to some video games, shall we? All right, so I want to open things up with um, some stuff that went down. Of course, Mortal Kombat X coming out this past Tuesday. And there's been a lot of discussions about varying things from microtransactions to purchasing easier fatalities to other bonus content to the nickel and diming from nether nether realm and warner brothers etc 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 well a couple of initial impressions so i picked up the limited edition version of the game it was uh 99 and i ended up getting goro all the guy you know all the dlc some skins etc now I had an option to purchase the standard $60 version and not get anything except my Goro pre-order. But 
I did want the other characters. Now, of course, the case can be made. Rich, you could have just as easily waited until they released an Ultimate Edition and purchased that and got everybody and didn't have to fork over all that money. But I took it upon myself to lay out the cash. I did this out of my own volition, knowing that there is going to be, you know, nickel and diming left and right. But I did it out of my own volition. I don't pass judgment because, again, my money, I, I made these decisions with my with my money, with my wallet. And um, because of that, you know, I got the game and all the characters, et cetera, et cetera. The game itself is quite enjoyable. Graphically, it is definitely very, very far ahead versus previous incarnations. Obviously, hardware being a big factor. I picked it up on Xbox One, and um, I know a lot of people are giving me shit about picking it up on PlayStation 4. Unfortunately, I still am in the camp that multiplayer or games that I play with people on the regular will be relegated to Xbox One, and single-player stuff will be utilized on the PlayStation 4. I'm still going with that logic. I'm a weirdo. Don't pay me any mind, but that's kind of, that's kind of how I'm doing it for the time being, um, only because... You know, I just haven't really ventured into multiplayer anyway. So, it, like, again, sticking sticking with my old mantra, I'm sure I'm sure everybody will differ. Slick, of course, says that multiplayer is fantastic on the PS4. I'm sure it is. Haven't really been gaming on a level that I should be to really, really speak on it. But that's the logic I've been using. And for the time being, I'll continue to use it unless, of course, uh, things change or certain games make it a necessity to pick up on the ps4 but in any case i have a decent stable of ps4 games to play and um you know i got stuff on xbox one as well of course uh slick ads fighting games will always be better on the playstation i don't disagree i'm sure street fighter 5 i will pick it up on the playstation but the bulk of my fighting game timing is spent on xbox for whatever reason just because you know my nephew and a couple of other people will pick that up and of course you know, Street Fighter V being exclusive to PlayStation pretty much negates uh, negates that point. But as I was saying, you know, most of the gaming I did was on the Xbox 360 for fighting games. All my single player stuff was done on the PlayStation 4. Now, obviously, as I said, Street Fighter V will get a, uh, a PlayStation release because it's PlayStation exclusive. So that will definitely be one of the first fighting games I pick up. On the PlayStation 4. Not that I haven't wanted to pick up, um, you know, any other games, but like I said, I picked up Dead or Alive. I'm playing that on Xbox, and I kind of just been giving the Xbox a bit more preferential treatment. I, no particular reason, just because that's the way it's been. But that doesn't say that it doesn't um, it doesn't say that I'm a, a fan of one system more than the other. It's just the way that things have worked out. But in any case, Mortal Kombat X initially. I can say graphically a beautiful game, very well done, extremely violent. So please, if you're if you have children under 18 that are bugging you to um to buy the game or pick the game up for them, then by all means, you know, use use discretion because the game is incredibly violent. There's a lot of adult subject matter and an incredible amount of gore. So you've been warned. Know the signs, folks. Make use of that rating system. And, um, you know, definitely give it a, give it a shot. So Danny asks, it, so it's a buy. Yes. Mortal Kombat X is incredibly enjoyable. Um, it's very, it's, it's pick up and play and play friendly. I, I thoroughly enjoyed what I've seen thus far. Uh, a couple of demos that I played were, were really good. And most of, you know, most of the demo fights, I'm going to try and, sh and share some footage with you guys on the site. Um, Slick says I'd wait. The online is horribly unbalanced. Um, let me let me acknowledge that first, just before I bring Danny on. Online and balancing issues. The game is two days old, three days old. So with the with the game is three days old. I'm not I'm not gonna shit on any sort of bugs or online problems. For a game that is roughly two days old. I just I understand I'm a pessimist and you know and I and I can be surly and angry and sometimes a little a little more negative than I need to be, but I'm also a fucking realist. The game came out Tuesday. The shit's gonna be fucked up. 
and it might be fucked up throughout most of April and into May. You know? Slick says, people are using unlimited stun attacks that cannot even be blocked. It's no different than people hacking GTA, dude. Shit's, shit's gonna get fixed. Eventually. Like I said, I'm still playing through first player campaign, single player campaign. I'm not even looking at multiplayer. Like, I want to enjoy the story, play with all the characters, find my mains, find my favorites, and build from there. If people choose to play online first and get their asses handed to them, that's on them. I want to play the game the right way. I want to enjoy the story. I want to see what the ending is. I want to know what the characters are. You know, all that fun shit. If you want to jump online and get killed immediately or deal with the lags and the cheats and all the bullshit, that's fine. But again, I'm not going to I'm not going to come waving a fucking hammer to shit on a game that is only, you know, 2 days old. I just don't got it in me. In any case, <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I I'll get into that. Anyway, as I was saying, it's a fun game. If you're playing some some local play, it's it's a great game to pick up. If you want to jump back into a fighting game and you want some gratuitous violence, it's a fun game to pick up. I think NetherRealm did a good job with it. Yes, the DLC, the microtransactions, the easy fatalities are bullshit. But let's be realistic. If you're paying to use easy fatalities, you're a fucking idiot. And you don't really know how to truly enjoy gaming. Because one of the fun parts of Mortal Kombat was learning how to do the fatalities, how to, how to figure out where you had to stand or where you were able to figure out some of this stuff. And that was just part of the learning curve and part of the fun. The fact that that even exists is just horrifying. And the fact that people are, are even contemplating paying for that stuff is stupid. Do yourselves a favor, play the game and enjoy it before just, you know, jumping on the bandwagon that shit is fucked up. Like I said, the game's two days old. I am going to review it, and the review will be on RageWorks.net probably, if not by this weekend, then perhaps by Tuesday. All right, so Slick informed me that Danny's on the line. I do want to discuss Guitar Hero Live. Uh, she actually got to see the game firsthand, play the game, and also I want to get her opinion on some of the stuff that people have been saying about a game that was only shown to a select group of people. I'm curious to see where she stands and how she feels about the future of the series. So let me bring her on board. Danny, what's up? Hey, dude. How's it going? Welcome to the party. What's going on? Nothing much. Just checking out stuff and listening to you guys. So you got to play Guitar Hero Live and you got to, a little hands-on time. You got to see how the game gets broken down with other members of the gaming media. So... What are your initial impressions of the game? So I walked away like I didn't know anything, did not know. Like I had an inkling that that's what we were going to this event for. But I had no idea, didn't go on Twitter, didn't go on Facebook, had no idea that this was what they were going to show us. And I actually found it innovative. Okay. Everyone's pretty much complaining, like making fun of the, the audience and the band and some things are just, it just seems awkward, but for the direction of what Activision really wants to do with the game, it makes sense. Okay. Like they want, you, they want to emulate the band experience. So the way to emulate that experience is to make it a first person music experience. I agree so with have that. the crowd looking at you, have the band reacting with you. That That is clearly what they were showing at the event and what conveyed when we were playing it. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about that first-person experience. For those of you unfamiliar with the Guitar Hero series, DJ Hero, Band Hero, all, the, all that hero bullshit that was out during those last couple of years, uh, basically you're, the musicians were all animated, uh, you know, they were all sprites. There was no real world, quote unquote, interactions. It was usually an animated character of some sort that was mimicking mm -hmm. your guitar motions in game. And now going this new route, going first person and really just interacting with the audience, it, it adds a new dynamic, but it also takes away from it just being 
you strumming meaninglessly on a guitar. It puts a little weight behind it. It adds, it allows you to show some personality instead of just jamming on some buttons. Do you agree? Did you feel that that's kind of where they were going? Yeah, and actually with, like, they ch yes, they changed the, the guitar, but you, you should have seen that coming. Yep. If they were going to announce a new game, there's no way our old guitars are going to work with the new systems. Like, that. Everybody shitting on that is just plain and ridiculous. There was going to be a new guitar. It sucks. It's not colorful, and it doesn't have six fucking buttons. But it makes sense for the way that they're trying to make. They're trying to convey this game, and everyone should have known that a new guitar was coming anyway. Right? Did you feel that it was and more simulation, like um, like Rocksmith? It well, it's different because Rocksmith actually wants it wants you to play with a real guitar right. and actually learn how to play it. This was more trying to introduce this type of genre to other people that felt a little Im intimidated with the, the old controller scheme. Like, there's six buttons, there's six different colors I need to know, and my hands, do I need my pinky? My fingers kind of hurt after a while. I can only play, like, one or two songs, and this just seems frustrating. Why should I keep going? So this actually, like, three buttons, which is really six buttons. There's the top row, the bottom row. It actually feels kind of natural right? and makes you want to keep playing for a bit. Well, you mentioned that people were complaining also about the, um, the live audience. But it's not really, like, mm -hmm. live. Like, like, it's not just a group of people randomly no. in a room when you play. So uh, can you break yeah. that down a little bit? Yeah, so what Activision did was they actually held, like, I guess, fake concerts and recorded the the fake concert to use within the game. Okay. So you're playing with real, real bandmates. So what you see is all, like, it looks like you're playing, like, remember the old games that used to use, like, actual movie clips? Yeah, like most of the, the stuff on Sega CD. Parts? All the Sega CD yeah. stuff, Night Trap, all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this is exactly like that. Except in the middle of it all is your highway of you playing and right. notes for you to play. So these notes actually look more like... It kind of looks like Rocksmith notes where you, you're you actually playing chords. Right. So there's chords, there's... you can place your finger like there's weird combinations that you can do now that actually make it look if you look at your fingers as you're playing it looks like you're actually playing notes oh nice mm -hmm. uh, was the so i i like it i really do like this this like i need to see how rock band is actually going to like how they're going to step up their game because right. Activision actually came out first with here's it, not only is the game coming out here's gameplay here's the guitar here's what it's going to be like when you battle and got to play it like I didn't get to see or didn't get that from Harmonix yet so I'm hoping that they reveal a little bit more going forward uh, can, how about the uh, the introduction of GHTV, which was their uh, playable music video network? How did how did how was the integration for that? Did you get any any deeper information other than what's been kind of given to the general public? How's that working out? No, so we didn't get to play with that there. We just got to play um, just a single player mode, so right. just through the through a couple of songs. So. The way that they conveyed the GHTV was it's literally various YouTube channels, and they're all based off of genres. So you would pick like a pop genre, take a look at it, like switch to that channel, see what songs are playing there. If you like them, you just jump right in and start playing. If you don't, you just move on to the next channel. So it's always constantly iterations of songs within a set list that they are going to curate somehow and make available always. So just like billboard, like if you have a Spotify account, you see how when you subscribe to different playlists, how you're getting 
updates whenever those playlists get updated. Right. It, it sounds like this is what GHTV is going to be. It's going to be constantly updated um, channels for specific genres that you can just jump right in and go play or move on and discover something else. Now, the, the GHTV, is that separate from the song, ca- the song catalog for the game? Or is that kind of like a backbone in addition to the song catalog? So this is totally separate. So okay. there's going to be like separate songs that you'll play with just the live part, which is the solo part. And then this would be where you do your challenges, where you check out the leaderboard, like your position on the leaderboard, and where you can do your head-to-head challenges, like you could battle against other people. Okay, so so this is going to be like the multiplayer sort of. Gotcha. Well, based... and then the difference with this is there's no audience, so you don't see the audience and you don't see your band. What the background is is the music video or the YouTube video oh, for nice. that song that you're playing. Well, overall, based on the the initial impressions, I know you had mentioned the song catalog. Did they give you any? anything uh, with regards to what people can expect or is it going to be something where you're going to get a a decent helping of songs and then of course everything will be dlc or microtransaction or was it just we're going to give you a big catalog they did not discuss yeah they didn't discuss pricing they did not discuss dlc and whenever you try to ask questions like we tried to ask if there's going to be drums we got a very vague answer. <laughs> like, we're just focusing on the guitar. So we're not even sure what really is going to be in the final game. I'm, I may be leaning towards that the guitar might not be the only thing in the game, or it could be, because they are going to make this full game playable from a mobile device as well. Oh, so that's pretty cool. this might just be a serious Guitar Hero, this Guitar Hero game. Well, you know, the thing that gets me, and this was something that I feel killed that genre, was the fact that it was almost like we're going to put out a dozen different discs, you know, yeah, the, the, all these different discs, mm-hmm. and then we're going to saturate it with all this DLC. And it just felt like you were you were always behind because the bulk of the content was just a la carte at that point. So do you feel that it makes sense that you'll buy you know, a disc based game plus the guitar and then the, the, the immediate uh, helpings of music are just going to be available as DLC. Or do you think that you're, you're, we're going to see a healthier, a healthy catalog and then it, the DLC would just supplement that? Well, I don't know if there is going to be DLC because they didn't mention it. And if the, well, the, the GHTV, GHTV, I should say, will replace it. Right. If GHTV will replace it, I'm for it because I, I like the concept of going into a playlist. And if there's one or two songs that I really want to play within there, that's great. I get to play them and then I get to discover new things and that I might not have discovered just by downloading DLC. So I like the idea that, I don't have to fish out songs that I want to play. Right. I can play them right off the bat and maybe discover a new artist somehow or a new band. So I, I like the concept of the GH TV. I may be in the minority because of it, because I've seen everybody just complaining that there, that there is no DLC, but it might have been that Activision didn't properly convey the idea of what this GHTV is going to be. If this right. is going to replace DLC, and it's going to make like not just hundreds, but maybe thousands of songs available for free. That might be interesting. I'd take that. I mean, what's the sense in, in paying for one or two songs when you're essentially using the backbone of YouTube, which... Many people yeah. don't acknowledge that YouTube has become its own music service because how much music is already available on YouTube? You can punch in any artist, any song, and I'd like to say at least 90% of the time you're going to find that song either because the person uploads a track with a blank background and lyrics or the actual music video, but there's something for a song on YouTube. Yeah, and there's the whole... There is Vivo or V-E-V-O... That's that. All it is is just music videos. Right. Like 
and that was on YouTube, and that started from YouTube. I, I'm totally for for seeing seeing this out. Like it was just announced Tuesday. Right. They even let the public play it. The video is also live on GuitarHero.com, where you can see the press conference for yourself, so right. that you could see the same same presentation that I was given. You could go check it out for yourself because I I really think that the media that was there kind of skewed the news a little bit. And I can didn't see that. See the innovation and highlight the innovation. There's a lot of innovation there, and Activision really wants to try to bring back the genre, even though they kind of killed it by re- releasing a Guitar Hero like every six months. It yep. felt like it's true. They're they're trying to to bring us back, or they're seeing how how excited everybody was about the rock band. Um, announcement, and they just want to ride that train. Like, I, I'm for it. I, I want to see what else they're going to announce this coming E3 when we go check it out, and and just see what they have planned because this might not be it. There might be more. Did you feel that the um, you know, going back to the guitar controller briefly, did you did it feel like a more premium? device like a uh, more premium accessory or does it still have that kind of quasi plasticky feel no. <laughs> oh no the, this felt different it it felt comfortable in your hands it it felt sturdy the only thing i miss is remember back in the day when you could shake the controller to yeah. activate star star power yep they have this big button that says hero power at the <laughs> end of it and it's like <laughs> It, it was awkward to activate it. You really needed to time it properly because that needed like a hard press Jeez. for it to actually get anything to happen. That that was the only quirk about it. Well, but we- it, it didn't feel cheap at all. Well, that's good. I was going to say that it's weird because we are in the era of, you know, motion control. <laughs> so you would have thought that the that the dip of the guitar would have still been a a, a function. Yeah, I I still think that they might like announce Connect functionality, just given with the fact that depending on where you're standing on the stage, the sound, the music sounds different. Right. So I kind of hated the game controlling that for me. Right. I would appreciate it for me to control it. Like if I wanted to be closer to the crowd, I want to be able to like walk up closer to the connect. And oh, that would if be I cool. wanted to be closer to the drummer, I I walk in that direction. So then I could be em- like seriously emulating that band experience at home. Like I would be for that. A lot of people wouldn't. I would be. Well, you're also about the immersion, which at this at this stage yeah. of the game, I th- I feel that. What Activision did, and and you may agree or not, I feel that Activision used this Guitar Hero announcement and where they were going to kind of dip their toes in the pool. Because honestly, yeah. nobody's been doing anything with accessories. Like you've seen the the Kinect, the PlayStation camera on the PS4. None of that stuff is getting that exclusive that, that exclusive usage that they touted when they first announced these systems. Remember, everybody was into the Kinect. And this and that, and now mm-hmm. all of this stuff is kind of fallen by the wayside. So, Activision, I feel, based on what you shared, the video footage that you shared, I think they're playing it safe. But they're also going to sneak some some revolutionary stuff in there because they know that the technology has evolved so much, and music is now so freely accessible that for you to make somebody mm-hmm. pay ten dollars for a song pack in an era of like like you were saying, you know, YouTube. Spotify, Vivo, yeah. so many services, it's pointless at that point. Yeah, exactly. Like, people already know how or sort of expect how to discover music. They're just looking to this game to play those songs. Like, I was playing, I was listening to the song on the train. I want to go home and I want to belt it out, you know? Right. That's what they're looking for in Guitar Hero and Rock Band. It's like, I don't want to go to karaoke. I may not want to sing in front of other people. I may not want to pick up and learn an instrument. I think it's too hard. I'd rather pick up a plastic controller and start playing. Like, that's totally fine. Don't feel bad. I still I still have my, my DJ Hero Jay-Z Eminem suitcase controller. Still have that. <laughs> still, 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 still occasionally... 
blow the dust off of it and play it just because DJ Hero was probably I kind of felt now now that you know years have passed like they truly jumped the shark with that but that but those games were yeah. really really fun and Slick can attest to that as well because he played his fair share yeah, well, of, of DJ they, Hero. They're the developers working on Guitar Hero Live, so you're gonna get some slick stuff. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, you know what you showed and the videos you shared and the stuff you shared from the event. It really, really looks incredibly promising. And to go back kind of a little bit to what you said, it's very easy to, mm -hmm. to automatically dismiss it as, you know, ah, it, it's all right, whatever. But we're also dealing with what is essentially a beta of this game. Things are going to mm -hmm. change. Things are going to improve. Quality control of the instruments are going to still be there. So at the end of the day, we may see something a bit more you know, a bit more robust come E3, which you said for yourself, you know, they're probably, they'll probably have a, an even stronger presence there, especially if anything is coming out of harmonics as well. Oh uh, yeah. Well, we'll be reporting Royal Flesh magazine. will be there. So check out, be sure to be on the lookout for that. There you go. Is there anything else you wanted to add about the event? Um, just that I, I, I still play rock band regularly. So I, decided to play the guitar last night and seriously my hands hurt like having to use four fingers I totally forgot like how awful I am or <laughs> how much I used to play back in the day or something something's definitely different because my fingers can't move like they used to <laughs> ah, there you go uh be before Hell before yeah. I before I let you go I did want to ask you about a, a separate gaming story and I wanted your thoughts on it um, mm -hmm. Time Magazine released their annual Time 100 list, and um, you know ga the gaming the gaming community has been represented there numerous times. The developers of Minecraft were there in 2013. Shigeru Miyamoto was there in 2007. Um, both of them were included in the Titans category at the time. Um, Anita Sarkeesian was included this time for gaming's feminist advocate, and I'm curious about where you stand on that because the time the time 100 list is a very very uh large list of who's who and influential personalities and i was curious just as a as, as a fellow um gaming personality let's let's use that if it, you know let, let's and i'm use, a lady yeah well i didn't i didn't want to use that because that's fucking obvious but um, <laughs> you know but <laughs> It's like, oh, Danny's a lady. Yeah, good job, guys. Um, but, but in all seriousness, <laughs> you know, you see the Time 100 list, and this is a pretty big deal. And the fact that she's been, she, she made it onto this list as, you know, a, a gaming's feminist advocate in the piece that Will Wheaton put up, um, it, was, it was crazy. And, and it was, she was, uh, you know, also under the Pioneers category um, alongside actress Laverne Cox, uh, astronaut Scott Kelly, and Sarah Koenig as well. And, you know, Based on based on what I just said, how do you feel about her inclusion? Do you feel it's good for the industry? It's bad for the industry? Did does she paint the industry in a light that's a little too a little too gray? You know, I'd li I'd like to know where you stand on it. Well, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of hers. Okay, and I never was. Like it, her Kickstarter had promise and her kickstarter was supposed to be educational but i've watched her videos and they're all one-sided do not tell the whole story and i it would have been great if she actually did both sides like here's the pros here's the cons and and this is why gaming needs to change right. and she's she's just brought out like like just the bad and it it's hard it's hard it's hard for me to to support her like okay. yes i've noticed some things are wrong and some things are wrong in the industry but she's getting a lot of hate for 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 no reason sometimes it seems and i, I I put you I on the spot. I, <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's it's fine. You put me on the spot. It's just that I I would not think of her as like 
a thought leader mm. in that category for feminism because there are a lot of other feminists that are working towards giving us equal rights. And it always starts off with us. Like we need to start standing up whenever we see something wrong. Right. And that's always what I've thought. Like never let somebody walk over you just because of your, your gender. Right. Should be treated like everybody else. Like some of my favorite games aren't like lead female protagonists. Right. It's true. I just enjoy them because I enjoy them. I, I don't see myself as a girl sometimes. Right, but but that label. No, I I understand that, and and I'm glad you actually painted it in that light. And the reason I say this is because I feel that what she did was that she she came into it with good intentions, but then leveraged all the negative aspects of it as being the scope of the of the of the big picture. In other words, she came in, hey, you know, I want to talk about uh, equal rights in gaming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, when the people started coming out of the woodwork, you know, fuck you, I'm going to burn your house down, I'm going to kill you. Before you know it, the story became about that and about that yeah. negative side of the business. And, and, and again, don't get me wrong, that exists in everything, celebrities, um, mm-hmm. Instagram, it's it's everywhere. It's 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 an occurrence that happens on every platform. The thing that got me was that, like I said, she came in with good intentions, and then she just leveraged every ounce of negative energy as the bigger as the bigger pulpit for her to deliver what she was trying to get out there. And that, you know, I kind of thought that that yeah. was not the move. Yeah, but that also sucks that we're in the age where we can't say our fucking opinion i agree because someone will get on their computer and track you down and then start posting up videos of how they want to try to kill you like but you know what that is when was that the normal (laughs) when did that become the norm but that's the problem with accessibility and and the double-edged sword that it is for every for every good intention thing that we do there's a bad intention thing out there for every one picture we put up of a cat on our Instagram, there's five people that are going to say, I hate your cat and I hope to throw it in a wood chipper. You know, that's just, that's just the way it is. We, we live in a, in a, in an era of accessibility and the problem isn't so much the accessibility. It's the fact that people aren't taking a stand about that individually. It's like people don't, people don't realize that, Hey, I can find your IP address. I can show up at your house or, Mm -hmm. or, you know, the world is an incredibly small place. I can remember what you look like and bump into you at an event. And, and, you know, it it goes back to what, what dark helmet just said in the, in the chat room, keyboard warriors, keyboard warriors exist in every genre, wrestling, MMA, gaming. They existed long (laughs) before any of this. Exactly. Long before Gamergate. They, they were there. It's just Twitter and Twitter Instagram and probably Facebook have just given them more power. Right. They've given them more power, but that's also because that power has been leveraged and, and, and people don't hate, don't like when I say this, but people have leveraged that hate as a platform to get themselves over. And this is, this is everybody, every, every gamer, you know, gay, straight, black, white, um, whatever the case may be. Some of them have leveraged that as a platform for, you know, even bad press is good press. And that's not good either because that's strengthening the resolve of people that want to continue to tear down your your medium and your message in a negative light. It's like if she would have, when people started doing all that shit, she would have been like, listen, you know, there's two sides to every argument. Here's the other side of it before you guys get all crazy. I think it would have changed people's opinions. But the problem was that yeah. once it started and she realized, oh man, people get so pissed off then she figured I'm just going to leverage that and and get over and and you know get a bigger platform which isn't terrible if you know what you're doing but the problem is you're using that message and you're painting an entire community as as one color and that's not the case Yeah, because... I think that's the pro- that's the problem I have with it. It's yep. like I've seen her videos, her videos are like, like for as much money as she got, she's turning out the videos like every six months, three months mm-hmm. or something. Like it took, it took a long time for the first one to come out. 
And then she staggered all the rest of them, and they're all just her opinion. And your opinion, while it's great, I would love to hear somebody else's opposing opinion and then see a debate because that's more interesting than just getting money just to churn out videos for your opinion. I agree. Well, you know what's funny? I, you know, just to kind of bring it full circle, I had mentioned some stuff about um, Gamergate and stuff a couple of episodes back, and I remember I put the episode on face on uh, YouTube. Somebody shared the video, and they're like, oh, you know, this guy starts talking about, you know, the feminist agenda and blah, blah, blah. And I had to go out there, and I believe the following week I said, listen, you know, if the feminist agenda means that I don't want to see a girl get called a cunt rag and that I'm going to kill you or burn down your house, then I'm sorry. Then I guess I'm a fucking feminist. Then, oh, I'm sorry that, you know, I don't want you to be called a piece of shit because you have an opinion. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess that makes me a feminist like that. It blew my mind. But again, that was somebody that and and I responded on YouTube and, you know, I wrote a comment and I said, listen, if you have a, a you know, a sister a mother, uh, you know, a girlfriend, uh, a female in your life who you love and care about, and she wanted to share her opinion, and I wa- and I came along and said, "Fuck you, you're full of shit. I hope you die." I hope. I said, I sincerely hope that you'd want to beat my ass. Like that's that's the natural order of things, and that's what that's what gets me. Of course, after I said that, the person didn't write back, but that's what it goes down to. It's like, yo, I can disagree with you. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to go home and sharpen my axe with the hopes of chopping down your door and killing you in your sleep. It's not how this shit works. You know, we could di- we could yeah. disagree with it. We could disagree without you hoping I, I drink a glass of AIDS. You know, <laughs> like that's that's how shit is. <laughs> we could disagree that easily. Yeah, there you go. Well, I, I did. I like I said, I wanted to get your opinion on that because it was. Such a crazy news item. And I'm like, wow, she made Time 100. And again, it's like, yo, you're making Time 100 riding a wave of hate. You're on that surfboard riding a wave of hate <laughs> into the Time 100. Yeah, and all, all it is, all it's going to do is just generate more hate. Yep. And that's not what we want. Like, we want to be treated fair, but we also, like, we love games. Like, we just want to see a little more, like, diversity. That's it. Yeah, well, I'm not asking to change the fucking world. That's Jeez. it. it the, the diversity thing is funny, and I'm glad you bring that up because it's diversity in gaming. It, you know, we we talked about we we were joking about um, Dead or Alive, and Dead or Alive super diverse. I love Dead or Alive. <laughs> super diverse. And I love that I have booby dynamics. That's fucking fantastic. I do not see any problems with that. There you go. But you but you see the problem that, that you saying that everybody's going to be like, "Yeah, man, but she's like the last of a dying breed." And it's like, "Yo, you know how many chicks don't Yeah, I'm a unicorn. No, but but you know what the thing is? It's like people don't think that it's like the old joke that they're like, yo, girls don't fart. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, yo, <laughs> girls do all the terrible shit we do. You know, they Who watch porn. You? We don't. You know, and we don't like, poop either. Exactly. Don't, they, y'all don't poop. No, it's just magic sprinkles that fall out uh, 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 of, of your, of your, of the butt cavity. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's, it's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like people don't realize and they have these preconceived notions that, you know, oh, you know, Go in there and make me a sandwich. Yo, that's all well and good, you know, if you're going to make me a sandwich. But at least let's play some games first. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. But um, Sandwich can wait. There you go. But uh, I, I appreciate you sharing your input. I, I'm very glad you got to call in. We were able to shoot the shit. And, of course, um, for you to share your opinion on this Time 100 piece. Uh, uh, before we wrap it up, uh, where can people find you, and what in particular do you want people to check out this week? Besides the um, Loot Crate contest, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am giving... So, there's the Loot Crate contest that we do every month, once a month, on Royal royalfleshmagazine.com. Um, that ends, I think, tomorrow, so people have at least 24 hours to get in on that. And on top of that, if you have any old cosplay photos, if any time you've ever cosplayed in your life, all you need to do is share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram, and you can probably win a pair of pretty awesome 
bleach umbrellas. Like, you can't buy these anywhere. I tried to find them on Amazon, tried to find them on Google, couldn't. I'm the only one that has these things, and I'm giving them away to anyone that shares their cosplay photos on royalflushmagazine.com. Um, other than that, you can find me on Twitter. I'm rfmag, at rfmag. That's the official Royal Flush Magazine Twitter. Right. Um, my personal one is Royal Flush Gal. And Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Royal Flush Magazine and royalflushmagazine.com. That's there you go. about it. Danny, you're the best. I thank you for calling in, sharing uh, a lot of insight into the brand new Guitar Hero Live, and of course, uh, sharing your thoughts on Time's annual Time 100 as well. Again, uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate you calling in. No problem. Thanks for having me. I needed to like get my Guitar Hero enthusiasm out because it seems like people aren't conveying it properly. No, we'll make sure to get that out. Thanks again. I appreciate it. No problem. Take care. All right. See ya. All right, guys. That was Dan. You can find her, as she said, on Twitter at Royal Flush Gal. But you can also follow Royal Flush Magazine at RF Mag. And we're going to make sure to give you guys links not only for her Loot Crate contest, but also to win your Bleach umbrellas as well. So definitely dig through your archives. Find that one cosplay photo from that one year that you decided to dress up as Pikachu to go to work and share it on royalflushmagazine.com and you can win those awesome bleach umbrellas. Again, we're going to share those links in the show notes as well. All right, so moving along into some of the other gaming news items, I did want to talk about MPD. Uh, we've got both console and gaming numbers and stats I want to share with you guys. Uh, first up, of course, big shocker, uh, PlayStation 4 was March's top-selling console, um, earning the number one slot, not only in console sales, but also in software sales as well. In addition to that, on the Nintendo side of things, nin Nintendo's total 3DS hardware sales have increased 80% when compared to this the same quarter last year. This is a big numbers for Nintendo, really a step in the right direction. Um, the Wii U has seen a 20% increase year over year. But again, one of the big reasons why the Wii U's um, you know, insertion rate has not increased is just because it feels like there is a vacuum of games with regards to that platform. But again, there are some games in the works, Splatoon, of course, which I'm waiting for, and a couple of other titles as well. So I have a feeling those numbers are going to increase going into the summer months. Uh, with regards to Xbox One, Xbox One sales continue to outpace Xbox 360, which, again, is great because they're they're tallying these numbers at the same point that the 360 was in its life cycle, which is good. It's a step in the right direction. Um, the average time playing Xbox One over live during the month of March saw a 45% increase year over year, so more people are out there playing Xbox Live, playing on the Xbox One on a consistent basis, and I'm seeing more and more people that I know in my own social circle start jumping into the quote-unquote current generation of consoles. I've seen a couple of guys that have already traded in their PlayStation 3s to pick up their PS4s or their 360s for their Xbox Ones. The, you know, the medium is evolving, and there is a bigger adoption rate. Plus, I'm also seeing more and more people become like myself and Slick and some of the other uh, members of the MTR team that are becoming multi-console owners across the board, not just jumping into the Xbox One pool or the PS4 pool, but across the board and even keeping those old consoles because there's still titles and there's still many enjoyable games to be, to be you know that are still being offered. And then there are those that are still the holdouts that are waiting for something big, to really, really drive them to these new consoles. And with the news I got on deck for this week, there are a couple of titles that will do just that. Speaking of which, let's talk about the software side of things. Uh, the top-selling games for March are not surprising, especially with some of the titles that are there. But I did want to share uh, some, some, you know, just my own little bits of uh, insight into these numbers. So, Final Fantasy Type O HD for PS4 and Xbox One made the list. Uh, Borderlands The Handsome Collection, also on that list. NBA 2K15, 
uh, Minecraft, MLB 15, the show uh, for PS4 and PS3, which should not be a shocker just because there is a serious, serious vacuum with baseball games, with MLB the show pretty much being the, you know, no pun intended, the only game in town. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare continues to be in the top 10. Mario Party 10 sold 290,000 copies, both in physical and digital formats, according to Nintendo. GTA 5, of course, still on that list, and now with the PC version, I'm sure will be an extra, extra bit of a bump for Rockstar's uh, bottom line. Bloodborne on the PS4, also on that list, and Battlefield Hardline was the number one selling game, available on Xbox One, PS4, 360, PS3, and PC. So, the reasoning that, that I wanted to kind of dig into this a little bit is because the, the titles that are there, it's a healthy mix of titles, but as you can see, there is only really one Nintendo title on there, being... Uh, Mario Party 10 and this goes back to what I was saying that there's such a a vacuum with regards to really really good Nintendo Wii U releases that for this one game to be the only game to crack the top 10 while again it's a new game and there's other Nintendo games that are out there but it just feels like I said that there's you know these other games they're multi-platform and it's just a, a serious um it, it's it's a shot in the foot for Nintendo to not be putting out at least decent titles every two months at minimum. I know that their third-party offerings are a little limited, but I do feel that there's got to be some other stuff in the tank, but with delays and everything else, plus, of course, you know, with the, with the stuff going on with the 3DS and the rumors of Nintendo's new system on the horizon, there's a lot going on in the big end, but I'll be honest when I say that Nintendo's folly is always, go it always goes back to them not putting out games on a more consistent basis. But in any event, Mario Party 10, I've heard good things. I know a lot of people that really love the Mario Party series and pick that up day one and are really, really enjoying it. So, it, it, you know, they, they're definitely part of that drive for putting this game in the top 10 for the month of March. Uh, last month's top selling game was Majora's Mask also on the on February, excuse me, that was the top-selling 3DS game for February, um, and it knocked the PS4 out of the top spot as well because it actually helped to move the 3DS units as well in the month of February. So Nintendo definitely still has a lot of fight in them. I know a lot of people are quick to quote-unquote sound the death knell for a, a litany of reasons, but Nintendo definitely has been more aggressive with their mobile offerings and now with their their jump to you know more mobile in terms of of cell phone offerings we're going to start seeing a lot of interesting games being available on the truest mobile platform being the phone um you know all the different smartphones that are out there but uh kudos once again for nintendo at least getting one game in there for the month of march i'm curious to see how mortal kombat 10 fares in april um primarily because Every place I went to, uh, the $149 uh, course statue sets were sold out, and everybody was picking up their games. Like I said, there's a, a strong number of you that have, you know, that have your, your opinions on it and choose not to buy it. And again, freedom of choice definitely dictates that. I know Slick, um, you know, mentioned that to me a couple of times. And as I said to him, you know, we, you know, in the era of, of complaining with our wallets, we can still do that. I mean, the game itself, if you choose to buy it and support it, great. If you don't, you don't. But if you want to buy the game and don't feel it necessary to buy the DLC, then don't. You know, that's that's really it. If you don't want if you feel that the DLC is nickel and diming, don't buy it. Or and and this is something that I saw in an article on Polygon, don't buy the game at all and wait for the ultimate edition of the game to come out and just pick that up, which I'm sure is gonna happen. No time soon, but definitely in, in 2016, I would not be shocked if there's an Ultimate Edition of Mortal Kombat X. While we are on the subject of MPD numbers and new releases, I can tell you right now that I know for a fact what the number one selling game for August will be. Now, you're probably all saying to yourselves, gee, I wonder what that is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Madden. NFL Madden 16 
which is the 27th edition of EA's uh, sports, uh, EA Sports football flagship title, will be hitting stores August 25th, 2015. So if you are a hardcore Madden supporter and a hardcore Madden gamer, then definitely mark down August 25th, 2015 on there. Slick adds, uh, how can you not call it nickel and diming when Mortal Kombat X DLC is already on the disc? You got to pay to unlock it. You know what? Instead of going through the chat, I'm just going to bring Slick on and do it that way. Slick, are you there? Yeah, you just put me on the spot. <laughs> yeah, well, here's here's where here's where we're going to go with this because you've been you've been very vocal since Tuesday about it. And again, I, I'm not dismissing your opinion, so please, anybody that's listening, do not think that I am. I'm doing the hard sell. I do understand where you where you're coming from with the nickel and diming on the DLC, but the nickel and diming on on this DLC is not a new. It, it's not a new thing for gamers. You get what I'm saying? Like Mortal Kombat X isn't the first game to do that shit. Fuck Capcom was notorious for that shit, too. No, they're not the, the first people to do it, but it, it's becoming a trend. Right. And like you always say on the show, to speak up with your, right. your pockets, people are not doing that. They're, right. they're complaining, but they're still putting the money down. That's it. But, dude, uh, what did I tell you? I laid out $100 for the fucking game. I'm one of those dickheads that does that. I did it. But, but again, I acknowledge that fully. Why? Because I wanted to play the shit. Because guess what wasn't in my mailbox this, this past weekend? A copy of Mortal Kombat from Netherrealm. So since the shit wasn't on my, in my mailbox as a quote-unquote member of the gaming press, I had to go out there and buy the shit. And I want to kill people as the predator. True, but you yeah. could have still bought the shit. Well, that, that, the sixty dollars version. But but you said, but that's exactly what you beat me to it. I want to play as the predator. I wanted to play as Jason. When that shit was announced, I said, "Yo, I'm buying this shit." Yes, I knew it was on the disc. Yes, I knew that a year from now there would be an ultimate edition because we all know that shit of the game. We all know it. It's it's a no brainer. But I wanted to enjoy the shit now. You got to pay to play. You know what I'm saying? But to go back to what we've said, yeah, I could have opted to just buy the $60 version. But then I would have still bought the Predator and fucking Jason as soon as they came out as DLC characters. Because why? I'm a fucking asshole like that. And I acknowledge it. You get what I'm saying? The problem is that in terms of speaking with your wallet, this is across the platform like anything else. When we talked about the $50 DLC from Call of Duty, nobody had done that shit ever. Yo, here's a $50 DLC. And as soon as the first sucker dropped that $50 on the counter, they said, we got ourselves a winner. You see what I'm saying? It, it has to become a thing where when the company announces it, nobody buys it as much as they want to. But that's never going to be the case. You get what I'm saying? I don't again, I don't disagree with your logic. I do not. And I respect you for standing your ground and not buying the shit. But you know that if people want to enjoy that experience, they're going to lay out the dough. Like I said, every one hundred and forty nine dollar edition that I saw in the two game stops in Roosevelt Field, which is a mall here in 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 Queen in Long Island. Let me rephrase that. You know both stores. The fact that both places had hundred and forty nine dollars versions that were all accounted for. What does that tell you? I mean, but that that's another thing I wanted to touch on. There's a lot of sheep See, out there, dude. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is. My, I, I'm mostly mad at the individual season pass for Mortal Kombat X and the $99 version. I'm actually not mad at the $150 version because it comes with that statue. Right. And anybody who is a collector of anything knows that a statue like that could easily sell for $300 by itself. So if you're getting that statue, $150 is really not a bad price. 
Yeah, but well, the, the freaking ninety nine dollar version gives you nothing but digital content. Yep, it's the same thing with with Batman that's coming out. Yep, there's two limited editions. One's a hundred, one's two hundred. But both of those physically put content in your hand, collectible shit. Yep, and I mean the same could be said for you know collectible stuff. But at least with a physical collectible item, you have something in your hand other than your dick. And I understand that, but think about it. Had I bought the game for the 60 bucks by itself, just totally, totally plain, totally regular, and a month from now, hey, we're putting out Jason as a as as a uh, DLC character, and he's going to cost five bucks. All right, so now the cost of ownership just went up to $70, okay? Oh, we're going to put out the Predator. He's another five bucks. Okay, cost of ownership now just went up to... 75 bucks you get what i'm saying and so on and so on and so on so i just figured rather than have the have the pubes pulled out one hair at a time i was gonna yank them all out at once <laughs> i mean like i said i'm ultimately i don't pay your bills no no, no i and, don't buy your games for you of course so, not you know, your money is your money. I'm not mm -hmm. telling you what to do with it. Right. But, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm basically sticking with what we've been saying for, for months now that, you know, as a community, if we want this bullshit to stop, we got to speak up about it. Exactly. But, I mean, you know, but, but you know what it is? My voice by itself doesn't do shit. And that, that again, that's also part of the problem. Right. But, but again, you, you know, and, and again, not disagreeing, but. I, I opted I opted to get the reaming. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like I am agreeing with you a hundred percent, but I wanted all the shit. <laughs> no, the only thing I was saying in the chat is just like the way you were saying it, it just kind of sounded like you weren't down in it. Well, dude, I'm not I'm not down in it because again, it's 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 unavoidable. Like I knew when the game dropped, I said, yo, they're not going to give us all this shit. I knew it for a fact. And the closer it got to release and the more the prices and the additions came out, that's how it panned out. But that's not going to detract from the enjoyment of the game. Whether I'm decapitating somebody with Scorpion or decapitating somebody with Jason or ripping somebody's spine out with a Predator, that doesn't dictate that the game is going to suck. That just dictates that EA, that, excuse me, EA, which is a, usually the culprit, that just dictates that NetherRealm knew how to fucking beat people over the head. And they succeeded in beating me over the head. And I enjoyed it with a smile it, on my face. You said that it's, it's, it's inevitable. It's not inevitable because there are still companies out there that give you the content without fucking you. Right. And, and those companies will always be the companies that people are going to reference for doing right by the gamers. But when it comes to mainstream big shit like this, we have to expect that the big offenders are going to offend. It's just going to happen. The only way to stop it is if we just said, you know what? I ain't buying shit. And that's all well and good. Dude, I wouldn't have bought shit if, if you know, I would have opened up my, my mailbox and the shit would have been in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but unfortunately that wasn't it and i genuinely wanted to decapitate somebody with a machete for me <laughs> call it sick call it twisted demented all of the above no that's just rich being rich oh, again we know that again brother you are not in the wrong in the least but freedom of choice. I chose to get fucking bent over this time. Willingly. Because I wanted the shit. Again, instant gratification is a motherfucker. I could have waited. You know, you know, in January or February, prepare yourselves for Ultimate Mortal Kombat X. You know that shit's going to happen. <laughs> you know it's going to happen. And then you're going to be upset. No, because I already know the shit's coming. Like, 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 dude, I bought the Mortal Kombat with Freddy 
for for I think it was eight dollars on Black Friday. Mind you, I already had owned Mortal Kombat and didn't buy the characters because I didn't feel that that warranted me spending the money that time. Because don't get me wrong, I like Freddy Krueger as much as the next guy, but not that much, you know? Well, let me ask you the, the, the dickhead question. Shoot. Have you played with Jason or the Predator? Not yet, because they haven't, they, they haven't, I think, released the uh, the time unlock for it yet. I think next week. But here's 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 the here's the kicker for that. I'm still trying to enjoy the fucking campaign. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like if you if you ask me this question next week or whatever, and 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 I haven't played with those characters, then yeah, I might be a little annoyed because I'm gonna be like, yo, what the fuck, man? Paid for the shit, can I have it? But. You're asking me, you know, three days after the game is out. It's like, yo, I'm just trying to play through and enjoy the campaign with what little free time I have. I will say, I will say well, I this. I mean, that, that, that's one thing I, why, like I said, I was messing with you earlier in the chat when you mentioned you said you were playing it the right way. Because I know a bunch of people who have the game who jumped right online. And, and, and that's just I not mean, the move, dude. Like you're going to, and, and you know, not to cut you off. That's for me personally, personally, that's not how I want to enjoy the experience. Why? Because the online's not going anywhere. Well, I get what you're saying, but with a game like Mortal Kombat, and like I said, I, I have my own opinion on the, the, um, fatalities, but the whole point is that you want to perform those fatalities on other people. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you uh, again, that may be how how you want to play it. I just want to play the game. Like the online shit, dude, we've been friends how long? How many online games have you and I actually played together? You could probably count them fuckers on one hand. Well, that's because you're always busy. Yeah, yeah, but but aside from that, again, one hand. Why? Because I just play shit differently. That's not to say that yeah, you know, sure. that jumping online isn't the bad thing, but I say this with all the games. Everybody runs to jump online, and the minute you do that and a company says, we're only putting out a game that takes place online and you're not getting a single-player campaign, what is the first fucking thing that happens? <laughs> what What is it? What is the first thing that happens when companies go, well, you fuckers don't play this campaign, so why are we putting it in there? Yo, man, what the fuck? You couldn't even put it in the book. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Well, I mean, you see how how thin the stories get with uh, certain titles that come out every year. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that, that's just because, you know, you got to kill X dictator in X country that has X cache of weapons of mass destruction, and you're going to use a laser-guided bomb dog and a seagull with missile launchers on its wings. I got it. <laughs> you know, like, like that I understand. But, dude, like, Mortal Kombat isn't exactly a fucking a thin story, you know? Like, there's a whole bunch of shit going on. You got P... Yeah, let me tell you, the biggest thing about Mortal Kombat that bothered me, that made me feel old as fuck, is the fact that the characters that I played as as a kid have kids. <laughs> <laughs> that, if you want to know what bothered me about that game, is the fact that, yo, I'm an old motherfucker when Johnny Cage is a dad. Johnny Cage and Jax. Thank you. Like, that's the, that's the bigger gripe, dude. On this DLC, pfft. Shocker, shocker, they didn't put half of the levels on as, as DLC. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I'm not shocked, you know? Same thing with Capcom, Ubisoft, that bit them in the ass, you know? Like, like some of that stuff, the companies and the players don't surprise me. But that's what bugged me. Like, I felt old as shit. tons of money just from the freaking disc sale. It's just fucking greed, man. Oh yeah, dude. It, it is. It is falling for it over and over again. It is. It is one thousand percent greed. And once again, I am definitely a part of that machine this time. Cause you know me, dude. I don't pre-order shit. I don't even give money to GameStop. Like you'd have to pry it out of my dead hand. But here's the kicker. 
Here's the kicker. Big box retailer Best Buy didn't step their game up. So when I went in there and I said, yo, I want to reserve this game, they're like, oh, well, you're just getting Goro. So I'm paying you $99 and no, correction. I'm paying you the 149 because they didn't even have the $99 version and I ain't getting the other stuff. Yeah, well, you know, you get the what statue. You I'm like, uh, yeah, I thought you said you got the ninety-nine dollar version. I did, but not from Best Buy. Like, I had to give well, GameStop the money. Ninety-nine dollar version includes the, the season pass. Right, but for some reason, when I went to Best Buy to do the pre-order, the guy was like, "It's either the sixty or the one forty-nine." And I'm like, I don't need. Oh, the they were sold out of the ninety-nine. Yeah, there was one? no ninety-nine dollar limited edition. None. At the Best Buy by by our by my by my office, and I'm like, okay, but the guy's like, yeah, but the 149, you get the statue. I'm like, listen, dude, I don't really give a shit about the statue because if I want the statue, I'll buy the shit on eBay from somebody. <laughs> you should have checked the website, dude. Especially, I mean, and you're the one who got me to get this. You got the freaking. The Gamers Club shit. Well, no, you got that shit for eighty no, bucks. No, no, no. Let me tell you what happened. I went to Best Buy. I went to I went to 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 Lame Stop, and I had pre-ordered the game initially to get Goro. All right, and then oh, two weeks after, I signed up for the Gamers Club. The week prior, I had upgraded to get the limited edition because I wanted all the other shit. At which point, I went and I said, "Damn, this Gamers Club membership knocks off." 20 bucks. I'm like, this is fantastic. So I'm like, I'll go to GameStop. I'll pre-order it. I mean, I'll go to Best Buy. I'll pre-order. Then I'll go back to GameStop and cancel the shit. This was my plan. Dude, I was ready to just say to Best Buy, to say to GameStop, I'll take my money back. Thank you. So I go into, in, into Best Buy. I'm like, dude, this is the story, blah, blah, blah. The guy's like, yeah, well, um, you don't get that from us. And the guy was like, you know, we, we, we. We told our district managers, blah, 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 but that's what we have, and we don't got we don't got any orders for it. I'm like, all right, whatever. And that was it, dude. I, I went about my business. You get what I'm saying? Trust me. I did not want to open up my wallet for GameStop. I say this a thousand times, but unfortunately, I was backed into a corner in this situation. I got you. Trust me, dude. I wanted to use that gamers club membership. I was I'm chomping at the bit to use it. Well, uh, my first use of it is, is already come in handy. I picked up oh, you used Batman it. for like twenty three dollars. Really? And um, well, it was on sale last week for thirty bucks. Oh, okay. So with taxes came out to like twenty six, and since the both special editions of Arkham Knight are sold out everywhere. <laughs> it looks like I'll be paying 48 bucks for Batman. See, dude, there's nothing wrong with that. No, other than the fact that I, I wanted the shit, but, I mean, that's my fault for me. For mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened with me, dude. I, I didn't think nobody was going to... Uh, dude, I didn't think this Mortal Kombat situation was going to get the way it got. Like I said, when I went to pick up my oh. copy, I was like, wow, you guys got a lot of, um, you know, limited editions by course. And the guy's like, yeah, we just don't have a place to put these. These are all sold. I was like, oh, shit. All right. And I'm talking about like there were at least uh, 20 of each of each for each system on their back counter. I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> well, my 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 grandmaster plan with Batman is going to be one hoping that they um they have a midnight release like they did with Mortal Kombat and going a little bit late there because when Watch Dogs came out, I bought the regular version and I should have stuck with it, but that's a whole other story. But um, somebody actually that same, you know, a couple of minutes earlier returned the limited edition. So, nice. you know, maybe I'll luck out again. Oh, I hope so. I hope so because you, when that addition, it's one thing if it's sitting there and it hasn't been it hasn't been picked up, but if right. somebody returned it, then that's an unsold product. There you go, 
And not only that, but you when that when that was announced, you said to me like, "Yo, dude, that's a that's a day one for me." And you know what it is, man? You, like I said, man, we always we always want to get the shit we want, you know? Yeah, the part of the reason why I waited is because it took so long to really know what the hell that was coming with these special editions. Yeah, you're a hundred percent right about that. Like, like, think about it. The Jason and Predator announcements weren't weren't made until like two weeks before the game came out. Remember? Exactly. And that and that's how they got me, dude. Because I was like I said, I pre ordered just a plain Jane regular edition and then i was like fuck <laughs> i was like you motherfuckers and my wife says to me she goes how much is it now and i'm like a hundred dollars <laughs> you know like you gotta say that with like with like that sly like a yeah, hundred bucks <laughs> you know not because my wife gives a shit about how much it costs but a hundred bucks is a fucking hundred bucks any way you slice it basically you know but dude i hope you get it because that batmobile looks awesome yeah even if i can get the batman statue but uh, you know of course uh then again <laughs> i don't know if i really even at 160 bucks that's a lot of freaking money i'm saying dude game. it's like it's like i i almost contemplated and again i'm sure people will frown upon this did i contemplate buying a, a Batman PlayStation 4 to resell it? Yeah, fucking right I did. <laughs> yeah, if, if that Gamers Club applied to it, I might have I might have done something. Exactly. I was like, I would have pulled the trigger on that, but then I said, do I really want to do that? Eh. You know, like, I talked myself out of dropping that dough just because I'm like, sure, I could resell it and whatever, but what if I can't? Remember, re all I have to say is Halo with the with the helmet, and everybody going crazy, and then the helmet is sixty dollars in like Best Buy, like a year or two later. Well, you can resell the Batman one easy, but could you resell the one you have? Right. But like I said, I, I talk myself out of that shit immediately. <laughs> Yeah, this guy at Best Buy tried to sell it to me. I was like, that's not what I'm asking for, dude. Yep. I, again, if you're going to buy the system and you're going to either sit on it as a collector's item or you're buying it for yourself, then have at it. Reselling, and I'm and I'm and I may I say this with 100% honesty, is a catch 22. It's like it'll it'll bite you in the ass. You know, you'll get stuck with shit and then you got to figure out ways to get rid of it. Yep, and I know this from past experience with Marvel Legends and uh, numerous other figures, and that was it. Even with the Amiibo thing, I jumped in, I made my money, and I jumped out because as soon as I went into a store, I'm like, "Oh, look! All the shit that was one per case is now twelve in a case." Whole lot, because <laughs> dude, that's what happened. Like that one day, I went in there, I'm like, "Oh, look, Mega Man, one per case." Made my money. Went back in there the next week. Kid you not and whole shelf full of them and i just went phew dodged a bullet there <laughs> basically but outside of that um is there anything else you wanted to add yeah i wanted to ask if you got a chance to see that godzilla trailer i put up i have not and that's only because i am still kind of rebuilding things over here yeah, I mean, I think you're really going to be excited with that one. Dude, it's, I still play the got, Godzilla game on the Dreamcast. What does that tell you? That you're a freaking psychopath. There you go. I should stream but that shit one day. I, I saw, like, they had everything on it. I saw King Ghidorah. I saw, like, the freaking Space Godzilla, different versions of Godzilla, including, they're, like, if you pre-order it, you get... They said Hollywood Godzilla, which translates to Fat Godzilla. That's it. That that translates to uh, Stretchy Pants Godzilla, <laughs> or, or 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 Meg Griffin Godzilla. Oh shit! <laughs> Dad, Grandpa Godzilla. That's it. 
I, I tell you this, at least they didn't try to hit you over the head and go, yo, pre-order so you could play as Baby Godzilla. <laughs> fuck, I would stomp the shit out of him. I would fucking use him as a soccer. I'd use him as a weapon and kick him at other people. That's it, dude. But yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll check it out after the show is done for sure. Yeah, man, it's that's that's gonna be one of those guilty pleasure games. Just like I don't care, I want it. That's it, dude. Sometimes it some... looks like basically a gigantic 3D version of that that game. What was that game? Freaking, I think it was called King of Monsters. Oh yeah, dude, I love King of Monsters on Neo Geo. Game? Yeah, yeah on Neo it Geo, it looks like a big freaking pretty shiny 3D version of that game. Dude, I re- even get to destroy the buildings and throw freaking like tanks at people and shit. Not to not to date myself and not to make myself look like a schmuck, but I remember I went into Chinatown to buy a Neo Geo. I sold a lot of my shit. I bought a Neo Geo cartridge system with King of Monsters. Nice. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what a Neo Geo is, <laughs> I don't ever want to hear anybody complain about the price of a console. Thank you. The Neo Geo was out in the fucking 90s. Yep. In the 90s. When we were paying like $199 for a Super Nintendo. Yep. The Neo Geo console was $700. And the cartridges were $200 each. That's right. I owned King of Monsters, Magician Lord, and... What the hell was another one? There was another one where you had, um, oh, and World Heroes. Wow, that was a piece of shit. Yep. But, dude, you know how I ended up getting World Heroes? I ended up getting World Heroes because I um, I did a favor for somebody, and they had it. that They got it, like, in a, in a garage sale. And I was like, listen. Oh I'll, yeah, I was like, listen, I'll take that off your hands. The dude was like... Yo, what is this big ass thing for? And I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, straight up, dude, I lied like a motherfucker. And I was like, listen, I'll give you a hundred bucks for that. And he's like, but what is it? I'm like, God, it's kind of like a the Neo Geo games. The boxes were bigger than your than a freaking like Little Caesars carryout. This is strategy guy, <laughs> dude. Like 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 a Little Caesars carryout box. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's like, <laughs> you, you think a freaking a Final Fantasy Special Edition strategy guide is big? Look for look up a fucking box art for a fucking Neo Geo game. Dude, and that was, like I and said. That, that, what was that? Arcade game, and that, that was the draw. It, it was the only thing that looked exactly like the arcade game. It was the arcade. Dude, it was it was ridiculous and it was cool because it came with the big the 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 straight Neo Geo arcade joystick. Oh, dude, I was happier than a pig in shit. But again, I had to sell. <laughs> I worked. I remember I worked for summer youth employment and I stacked every check. Every check and did like side jobs and all this stuff. And I remember I found the 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 Neo Geo the system in Chinatown because somebody put it in the newspaper, the bylines. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Dude had it in the bylines newspaper. I met him in Chinatown and the, the Elizabeth street shopping center. I bought the system from him for, I think it was like four, four eighty five hundred. 500. I, I, I have a nagging suspicion. The shit was stolen because he was sketchy as fuck, but a, <laughs> a, I'm on this train with this giant system in a in a Jansport with like cables sticking out of the top of it. I'm holding it for dear life as I ha- as I rode the train home. Watching everybody. <laughs> oh, dude, watch watching everybody. Dude, I it was like it was like to the point where I usually I kind of nod off on the train. I was super awake. What do you call it? The um, I remember seeing it, like just thinking to myself, "Damn, I wish I could get it." Just seeing it at that. Remember that that um, that that mom and pop game shop that they had in the Gertz Mall. Oh yeah, I remember those guys. I were, I was so mad when that place closed down. You and me both. 
It was a treasure trove of goodness. If that place was there right now, I'd never have to worry about getting like those 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 no name freaking games for PS3 and PS4 because they always had them. Dude, uh, you know what I bought from them before we wrap things up because we could go down memory lane forever. I bought Battle Arena to Shinden Three from them. Wow. And that game is limited as hell. Like, it came out and everybody's like, yo, this game is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I got Street Fighter Alpha 3 on the on the PlayStation, was it 1? Yep, in the big cardboard box. Nah, it just came with this. They always had some shit where they, they'll, like, put characters on your freaking memory card or something. Oh, yeah, they yeah, yeah. They always had some kind of extra shit they were giving you. Yep, I remember that. There was, um, I think I bought from them Psychic Force, the flying game where you, the fighting game where you, like, flew around. I vaguely remember that shit. I bought that from them, too. I need to check out your spot up in up in Corona, though. Hey, hey, hey! Don't get don't give that up. <laughs> <laughs> don't pretend that never happened, folks. Um, aside 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 from that, though. It anyway. There you go. Aside from that, anything else, my friend? No, I'm good. Well, I appreciate you helping me go down memory lane and share my uh, buying a Neo Geo from a crackhead. <laughs> I appreciate it greatly. All right, man. All right, brother. Peace. Peace. All right, guys. That was our very own Slick. Follow him on Twitter at RW underscore Slick. All right. So with that wonderful trip down memory lane with Crackheads, Neo Geo, and other gaming uh, stories for the week, uh, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to jump into this week's entertainment news, uh, which is... Was a little light this week, but there are some things that definitely need to be addressed. So let's get that ball rolling. All right, so... First thing I want to address, of course, is the Star Wars trailer, which many, many nerds across the world just were elated, excited, and full of joy with the trailer that was released after the Star Wars Celebration event. And I will say this, as someone who grew up watching Star Wars, and I say this because Star I didn't get to watch Star Wars till I was six or seven years old and at the time that I watched it I remember I think the first one I watched was I think the first one I watched was 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 Return of the Jedi with the Ewoks and the reason I think that one jumps out as my first film was because I bothered my mother for a for a wicked action figure I was like ma you know I need this 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 teddy bear with a spear and she was like what the fuck are you talking about and I'm like look 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 this dude and I, that I remember. And as I got older, I became, I, I, you know, I started watching Star Wars and understanding it more. And it just became something that I really, really enjoyed. And then during my high school years, they actually had re-released the, uh, the Star Wars trilogy in theaters. And I worked in the movie theater during the release of all three films. And I got to actually watch them on the big screen. And as somebody who, you know, watched it on a small color TV when they were growing up or on VHS, watching it on the big screen was just like, I felt like a big kid, you know, like, like it was just a magical moment for me. And that I think really solidified me being a fan of Star Wars. And of course we go to the, to the prequels and love them or hate them. There's, they have their place. Um, are they the best Star Wars films? Absolutely not. Jar Jar Binks, go fuck yourself. But um, I will say that outside of that, there, there were there were some cool things about it. You know, Darth Maul, fucking awesome. I like General Grievous. I like this character. Um, all the Clone Wars cartoons and all the really cool shit that came out of that. Again, 
you may have hated that trilogy, but a lot of cool shit came out of there. In addition to that, obviously when the new trilogy was announced, uh, you know, with with and the old cast, you know, returning, everybody was excited and we were waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And of course, little glimpses, little things here and there, people complaining about, you know, John Boyega's Black Stormtrooper, all the bullshit, but today for uh, you know, a minute and a half or two minutes, the, the 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 collective nerd community collectively shit themselves with this new trailer. Had a great voiceover from what can pretty much be, you know, pretty much is Luke Skywalker. You know, seeing Han Solo and Chewie, it was it was tremendous. And the cool thing was that at that moment, I really felt like how I felt when I saw that movie in the theater. You know, I just said to myself. You know, this 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 has the potential to be something great, something magical. And the thing is that, yes, we do have those moments still. You know, the the Marvel, the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has opened the floodgates for a new generation of fans to truly appreciate something that many of us grew up watching in different capacities or grew up reading. I I can vouch for my um my my manager his his sons are you know 12 and i believe 12 and 14 right now and they're hardcore into the comic phase and they're in that phase because of those movies they're going out there and reading comic books they're going out there and and getting a folder at their local comic shop and the reasoning for that is those movies it, it's not the books it's not the cartoons it is those movies same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy. Nobody gave a shit about Groot or Star-Lord or whatever 10 years ago. And there have been countless Guardians books. Countless. Countless ones. Nobody cared. But now that the movie came out, there's a new generation of people that are into these characters, that are into these personalities. And to see that happen once again with something like Star Wars was tremendous. Now, again, the movie could, could suck. The movie could be great. But at that moment, you know, on April 16th, everybody was was just a kid again. And that was very, very refreshing for me as, as just a fan, as somebody who covers all this shit. It was it was great. It was great that I could see that and just look on my on my Facebook timeline or on my Twitter timeline and just have people talking about those key moments, sharing screen grabs from the trailers and I said to myself, this is what it is. This is what it's, what being a fan is all about. Yes, we can be jaded all we want. But there are those few, those few moments where everybody just has, you know, that camaraderie. Like, yo, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. And, and that's what it was. I mean, it's been happening with, with Avengers and, and it's happening with Daredevil and it's happening with countless other things that I grew up with. And it's so great to see. I mean, I always come on here and we talk about all the jaded stuff and we do all this stuff. But again, it's one of those moments where you say to yourself, wow, you know, it's really cool that there's so many other people that are just as excited as me. And that's the kind of thing that that really is the bigger the bigger discussion. You know, it's just the fact that there were so many people that were super excited about this. And it's funny because everybody was excited last night because of the teaser for Batman versus Superman with the costumes. And here we have today this this brief, brief teaser that really just set the Internet on fire. And of course, now it goes back to your move, DC. And um you know the the teaser for Batman versus Superman and people are just just as excited about that same thing with Avengers Age of Ultron every featurette every clip every trailer we're all excited we're all talking about it dissecting it and I and I love that I love being a geek in 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 2015 and you know it's because it's acceptable now you know when you were a kid and you say you were into comic books you were part of a minority now it almost feels like when you say you're into comic books, you're part of a majority. And it's cool. I like it. It's great. And I did want to say that, you know, the trailer was tremendous. I really enjoyed it. We are going to put it up on RageWorks.net. Like I said, we're finally getting all our hardware issues behind us. So you're going to see all that stuff on the site within the next couple of hours. But again, 
it was so awesome to just be a fan like everybody else. Now, as for Batman and Superman, there was some stuff that was leaked out. It looked kind of cool, like hearing Batman's voice asking Superman if he bleeds. Uh, you know, do you bleed? And, you know, you're about to. It was really cool. And, you know, from what I saw, it just looked tremendous. And I'm really pumped for that as well. But again, those are my, my brief thoughts on the Star Wars trailer. We are going to share all that stuff on RageWorks.net. And I invite you guys to definitely participate in the comments. Let's get some discussion going. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what you think, good, bad, or otherwise. Definitely make sure to make your voices heard. While we are on the subject of Batman and Superman, I do want to talk about another uh, DC film, and that is the Aquaman movie. Of course, we all know that Jason Momoa will be playing Aquaman in Batman vs. Superman, but we also know that Aquaman will be getting a standalone film. And as of right now, riding the wave of success from Furious 7, James Wan looks like the guy that is going to be helming Aquaman and is not 100% official yet but he is definitely a guy that many people have a guy whose name has been tossed around quite a bit over the last week or so as the number one contender um, Aquaman hits theaters July 27th 2018 I'm sure within the next two weeks we will know for sure what goes down with that now on the flip side with Marvel Kevin Feige actually elaborated on what on which spider-man we will be seeing in the marvel cinematic universe and for those of you that were looking forward to seeing miles morales i'm afraid i've got some bad news uh no miles morales and we will be getting a peter parker spider-man in high school now the funny thing is that he was asked about are we going to get another spider-man origin story and he said no he said by now we all everybody knows spider-man's origin and we're not going to really acknowledge it to, to great detail. And I think that that's one of those things that's kind of, you know, it, it's, it's good news just because, you know, they, um, they, they're keeping it, they're keeping it within the realm of what it is and just digging into it a little bit. I'm sure his origins are going to be acknowledged maybe in a flashback, maybe in the intro for a movie, but I think just jumping into it, making Spider-Man the wisecracking smartass that he is, which, you know, Kevin Feige said is going to be the case, is definitely a step in the right direction. But alas, you know, Spider-Man's introduction into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I hate to tell you guys, is not happening anytime soon. And the reason I say this is, is because many of you thought, hey, we'll see him in Avengers Age of Ultron or etc. Unfortunately, that is definitely not going to be the case. If anything, we'll see him later on. But if it does happen, they're definitely keeping it close to the vest. I will say that. All right, let's uh, switch gears for a second and touch on box office numbers. It should come as no shocker that Furious 7, of course... Um, shouldn't come as a shocker, excuse me, that Furious 7 held onto the number one spot, earning another $60 million, bringing its grand total to $252.5 million. It's already earned half a billion dollars, and I'm sure by the time we get into May, it's probably going to be a billion-dollar franchise. Home came in at number two, bringing its total to $129.6 million, definitely successful. Uh, the Longest Ride was number three. Get Hard was number four. Cinderella was number five. The Divergent series Insurgent was number six. The Woman in Gold was number seven. It Follows was number eight. I'm bummed I actually didn't get to see it. Uh, Danny Collins was number nine. And While We Were Young was number 10. So we talked about Spider-Man. We talked about Aquaman. It would not be an entertainment segment without talking about the X-Men and a brand new casting edition for Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, this bit of casting news has been received in both positively and negatively, depending on who you ask. And that is the recent announcement that Olivia Munn, yes, that Olivia Munn from G4 and the newsroom, is going to be playing Psylocke in X-Men Age of Apocalypse. Now, obviously, many of you know Olivia Munn's work, like I said, from G4 or from the newsroom, but she has been cast in Avengers Age of, uh, excuse me, Avengers, uh, X-Men Age of Apocalypse 
as Psylocke. She joins, of course, the previous cast, which included James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer, Nor- uh, Jennifer Lawrence, excuse me, Nicholas Holt, Rose Byrne, Sophie Turner, Ty Sheridan, etc., Evan Peters, Oscar Isaac, who is going to be playing Apocalypse. Now, many people are torn with this casting, and the thing is, Psylocke is Asian-looking. And the first thing that everybody talked about was, hey, why is there no Asian actress portraying Psylocke? I can't tell you. Can't tell you whatsoever. But I will say that Olivia Munn, as an actress, as an actress, has has improved quite a bit. As 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 somebody who's been involved in the gaming geek and and you know geek culture industry, do I give a shit about her? No. Do I think she's improved as an actress? Yes. Why? Because she was fucking pretty solid on the newsroom. Now, can she bring that same level of intensity and 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 just on-screen presence to Psylocke? Remains to be seen. Primarily because those of us that know Psylocke usually know her as scantily clad ninja chick with purple side blade. That's it. Unless you're a hardcore comic fan and you know that she is the sister of Captain Britain. And originally she was English and then, you know, her consciousness was transported, it was put placed into the body of an Asian assassin. Again, Marvel storytelling at its finest. Now, X-Men Age of Apocalypse has a lot of different moving parts. That we've seen teases for Archangel. We've seen discussions about Apocalypse. We've seen wh- how Wolverine is going to be involved or not going to be involved. There's so many different things going on, and in a, and in a in a you know in a landscape where we're talking about Avengers: Age of Ultron, the next phase of Marvel movies, Batman and Superman, Star Wars. It's like. X-Men Age of Apocalypse is like an afterthought. So when everybody said, oh, Olivia Munn's going to play Psylocke, I was just like, oh, shit, I totally forgot about that movie. That's that's pretty much the camp I'm in. I don't hate the news. I don't love the news. They're just the news. <laughs> Simple as that. But again, definitely, if you, if you want to share your thoughts, feel free to chime in um, on our Facebook fan page. I'm curious to see what you guys got to say about that casting. Who would you have cast? Uh, definitely share that as well. It's definitely a superhero themed entertainment segment this week. Uh, the Wonder Woman solo film has lost their director. Uh, Michelle McLaren originally was scheduled to direct the Wonder Woman film, uh, but she left the project due to creative differences. And no less than a day or two after her leaving, it was announced that now. Um, she has been replaced by Patty Jenkins, who directed Monster. So uh, Je- Jenkins originally was supposed to uh, direct Thor The Dark World for Marvel, but left that film in the pre-production phase because of creative differences. So um, with that said, Wonder Woman has a new director, and on the on the Marvel side of things, Marvel is courting Angelina Jolie to direct the Captain Marvel film. It's not confirmed yet. Take it with a grain of salt, but that's the direction they're going in. I'm really curious to see how they bring Captain Marvel to the big screen because I feel that she is a a very, very cool character. And if she's done right and integrated into the Avengers effectively, it's going to make for some very, very interesting storytelling. Last bit of entertainment news, and this I am very excited about, is that they are talking to Matthew Vaughn to direct a brand new adaptation of Flash Gordon. Now, Matthew Vaughn, of course, you guys know, has been cranking out some really, really awesome flicks. And um, right now, also, I just heard a call drop. On which side was that? Hmm. It sounds like the uh, Block Talk radio feed took a dump. Uh... Yeah, the Block Talk radio feed took a dump. I apologize for that, guys. Um, In any case, uh, our Mixler feed and our video feed are still running, and this is our last story of the night anyway, so let's wrap it up. Anyway, as I said, Matthew Vaughn will be directing uh, the upcoming Flash... Well, correction. He is in talks to direct a brand-new adaptation of Flash Gordon, um, I love Flash Gordon. I thought the soundtrack was badass. And um, 
you know, I'm looking forward to seeing if Matthew Vaughn gets the gig because I want to see how he brings that to the big screen. Again, um, as I said, up oh, audio dropped out here too, it seems. Yes, Lick, the audio for Blog Talk Radio did drop out, so um, we're just going to wrap things up with the Mixler feed and our video feed for now, as I said. In any case, uh, really pumped for that. Like I said, Matthew Vaughn uh, possibly directing Flash Gordon. Once we get confirmation, we will share it with you guys. Anyway, as I said, the, uh, the call dropped out on the Blog Talk Radio side of things, so for those of you listening via Blog Talk Radio, I apologize, but... You can get the archived episodes of the show on iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. Anyway, that's going to wrap up the entertainment se- the entertainment segment for this week. And it's actually going to wrap up this week's episode of My Take Radio. So let's get the hell out of here, shall we? You've just heard My Take Radio episode 287, broadcasted live on Thursday, April 16th, 2015. If you're interested in being a guest on a future episode of My Take Radio, drop me a line at mtrhost at mytakeradio.com or at rich at rageworks.net. With regards to archived episodes of My Take Radio, you can find them in the following locations, iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. In addition to that, episodes, of course, will appear on rageworks.net. Before any of you guys head over to MyTakeRadio.com, realize that MyTakeRadio.com now forwards to RageWorks.net, which, of course, is the parent of MyTakeRadio. RageWorks, of course, the operating gears in the pop culture machine. Last but not least, if you want the best MyTakeRadio experience, make sure to pick up the official MyTakeRadio app. It's available for $1.99 on Android, iOS, and Windows mobile devices. That $1.99 gets you... 96K Stereo episodes of My Take Radio, mobile wallpapers, official um, pre-public downloads, meaning that any episodes that we release will go to the app first before they go to the general public, meaning um, exclusive episodes of MTR Behind the Mic, Beyond the Mic, and MTR in 60, as well as the Minority Film Report, will go to the app first. So definitely, if you're interested in that, pick that up. For those of you that have asked about the app being free, we still are working on that. But please note that every app purchase goes towards helping improve the show, improve the site, and of course, improve the product for you, the listener. Anyway, on behalf of myself, Slick, Danny and the Royal Flush team, and the rest of the My Take Radio and Rageworks crew, I am out of here. Thank you for your continued support. My Take Radio will be back next week, uh, Wednesday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. We're going to be talking about this weekend's UFC on Fox event. We're going to talk Raw and the week's MMA and wrestling news. And, of course, if gaming and entertainment is your flavor, then make sure to tune in Thursdays at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. Until then, I'm out of here. Peace. I'm rich, bitch. That's all, folks.